in this video and on the next one, we will be discussing everything that has to do with volcanoes. Now, for this video specifically, this is based on the 13th and 14th most essential learning competencies, which are describe the different types of volcanoes and volcanic eruptions and explain what happens when volcanoes erupt. Now, we will be able to achieve this two uh, by going through these four sections of our discussion. So first, we will define what a volcano is and identify its parts. After, we will be describing the different types of volcano. Once we were able to describe already these different types of volcano, we will then identify the different types of volcanic eruptions. Then lastly, we will explain why volcanoes erupt. Let's begin. The Philippines is home to about 300 volcanoes. Well, that's according to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or what we refer to as FIVOLCS, as you can see on the map on the screen. Well, there really are a lot of volcanoes in the country. Now, I have here the pictures of three of the most significant or magnificent volcanoes in the country. You have the first picture, the second picture, and the third one. Now, can you identify or name these volcanoes we have on the screen? Sige, I'll give you some time. Pwede niyong uh, hulaan. Ano? Kung anong mga volcanoes itong nasa screen natin. You can write your answer on a piece of paper o pwede mo sabihin ng malakas. Let's have the first one. Of course, the first one, this is the, the very popular Ma Mount Mayon or Mayon Volcano in Albay, Bicol. Of course, the one with an almost perfect cone shape. The second one, this is of course Taal Volcano which is found in Batangas Province. If you've been to Tagaytay, pakitan mo yun dun, ano? And of course, who would forget about the third uh, picture? This is Mount Pinatubo in Zambales Province. Well, these three are just some of the many examples of volcanoes in the country. But there are a lot in, even in other parts of the world. But what really is a volcano? How do we define one? Well, let's uh, go over to the first section of our discussion, which is volcano and its parts. So what is a volcano? So basically, a volcano is an opening not an opening in the earth's surface or crust where molten rocks, smoke, gases, and ashes are erupted. So take note that, very general, opening where all these materials come out of the earth's interior. Now, we usually uh, imagine, uh, when we speak of volcano, we usually imagine a um, mountain, just that it has a crater. Ano? Sa kanya, yung taas. But it's not necessarily that volcanoes would have to be high or steep. Okay, makikita natin yan mamaya sa ating mga example. Actually, uh, these volcanoes, these are signs that our the Earth is actually active. Okay? Now, um, it plays a key part in the Earth's uh, system. Why? Because the Earth's atmosphere, uh, even our waters and the crust were actually delivered by volcanoes. And even at this point, the volcanoes, they actually continue to recycle the Earth's materials. So far, we were able to define already what a volcano is. Now, let's proceed to its parts. So what are the parts of a volcano? Now, I have here on the screen a cross-section of a volcano. As you have seen, some of the parts are unlabeled. Tinakpan natin yung iba with numbers. Okay? And then you'll be able to see the name of the parts on the side. So this time, what I wanted to do is to identify. Ano? Ano yung tinutukoy na part ng bawat number na ito. So, I'll give you some time. You can pause this video uh, at this point. Tapos, i-play nyo ulit mamaya once you are already done. Okay? So, tapos na. Let's answer this. Let's have the first uh, part. Yung uh, part dito na uh, may nakalagay na 1. How do we name this part of a volcano? Of, of the volcano? So, for, for the first one, this is what we refer to as the magma chamber. Okay, so given the term itself is the chamber that uh, has the magma that comes out of the volcano. Okay, this is the pool. Sabi nga nila, this is the pool of magma below the volcano. So, when we talk about volcano, we usually hear the word magma. Ano, ano ba yung tinutukoy ng magma na to? So, basically, when you speak of magma, it pertains to the molten or liquefied rock. Okay, of course, underneath 
below the Earth's surface, the temperature is very high as well as the pressure. Because of that and because of different activities, this solid rock turns into uh, magma, okay, or liquefied uh, rock. Okay. Now, aside from uh, the term magma, we also encounter the term lava. Okay. How are these two different, magma and lava? Well, basically, both magma and lava, they pertain to molten or liquefied rock. The only difference is that when this molten rock is still inside of the volcano, we refer to it as magma. Whereas if it has already come out, lumabas na, ng volcano, we refer to it as lava. Nevertheless, they are both molten or liquefied rocks. That's why as you can see on our um, diagram here or picture, this is not referred to as lava chamber. It's referred to as magma chamber because the mountain rock is still within the Earth's interior. Or in, it's still inside of the volcano. And as you can see, if it has already come out of the volcano, we don't refer to it as magma flow, but rather lava flow. Kasi ang tawag na sa kanya dun sa mountain rock ay lava. Okay? So this is your magma chamber. Hopefully, nakuha yun na lang. Let's go over to the second part, pangalawa, taas yung um, part na yan. This is actually what we refer to as the main vent. So what is a vent, a main vent? Basically, the main vent is the weak point in the Earth's crust where hot magma has been able to rise from your magma chamber and reach the surface. So in simple terms, when you speak of uh, vent, it's basically the opening. Opening in the Earth's crust. Kaya sabi, weak part of the crust where magma is able to rise and come out. Okay, it's an opening where, where your, your magma comes out. But of course, before reaching the main vent, it has to go through this channel or pipe first. By the way, this is what we refer to as conduit. Yang mga uh, pipe na yan or channel kung saan dumadaan yung ating magma leading to the vents. Main vent kasi yun yung pinakamalaki. Going to the third part of our Volcano, which is, anong tawag dyan sa taas na yan? It's actually what we refer to as the crater, or the mouth of the volcano that surrounds the main vent. Yung main vent, ito yun yung opening, yung mouth lang, yung funnel shape na part na yan, that is our crater. That is the main vent because basically that is the one, the biggest one, and that leads to the crater. Okay? We have magma chamber, the main vent, crater. This pipe leading to the main vent, that's what we call pon do. Now, what have you observed in the fourth part? Aside from the main vent, magma can actually flow to other channels or pipes. So in this case, nasa side siya, nasa gilid. This is what we refer to as the side vent. You can actually have other side vents here aside from this one. Pwede meron pa dyan sa ibang part. Okay, so the side vent is basically an opening in the side of a volcano through which volcanic material can also erupt. Okay? What about the fifth part? Yan, yung part na yan, para nagkaroon siya ng panibagong maliit na volcano doon. This is what we refer to as a parasitic cone. So basically, this is a cone-shaped accumulation of volcanic material that is not part of the central vent of a volcano. It's a central or the main vent. If you have another cone-shaped um, accumulation there on the side, those are what we refer to as parasitic cone. So syempre, pag lumabas dyan yung lava, Yung magma, so lava na siya, pwede rin siya mag-accumulate dyan. And that forms yung cone shape, parang maliit na, na volcano rin doon sa side. Okay? But that is not, that is actually what we refer to as a parasitic cone. So we're down to the sixth. Of course, isa na lang naman titira. This is what we referred to. Of course, this other material, we have gas, uh, ashes, volcanic ashes, and um, actually even steam and lump of solid lava. Yung, yung magma na nag-solidify na lump of solid na molten rock. So aside from your uh, molten rock na nag-result nag sa lava flow, you have gases, volcanic ash, uh, lump of solid material, and even uh, water vapor that actually comes out of the volcano. So basically, these are, so you can see, meron pa dyan ibang mga part, pero yung ating diniscuss, those are the main parts of a volcano. You have the magma chamber, you have the main vent, crater, side vent, parasitic cone that results to lava flow. And aside from lava, you have their gas, volcanic ash, and other materials. So, so far, we were already able to define what a volcano is and identify its parts. Now, a while ago, we, we made mention that not all volcanoes are the same. Hindi sila pare-pareho. Now, 
how are these volcanoes classified? What are the different types? We will now proceed to the second section of our discussion. Types of volcano. Well, there are two uh, ways by which we classify or group uh, volcanoes. The first is according to frequency of eruption. So basically here, we base the grouping based on how often or how frequent a volcano erupts, the number of times it erupts. So for this, we actually have two types. We have what we call active, and the other one is what we refer to as inactive volcanoes. So probably you have heard of this uh, before. So how do we say that a volcano is active? So basically, we consider a volcano active if it has a record of eruption within the last 600 years. Okay. So it is recorded that it has erupted uh, within the last 600 years. Paano sure kung walang record pero nag-erupt naman? Dapat, if the, the materials that makes up the volcano is going to be examined, analyzed, it will be seen that it has erupted within the last 10,000 years. If it has uh, erupted within the last 10,000 years, then we can say that that volcano is an active volcano. So previously, we mentioned that uh, in the Philippines, we have around 300 volcanoes. Actually, 24 of these volcanoes are considered to be active. Okay, The most active being Mayon Volcano, uh, followed by Taal Volcano. Okay, Now, what about inactive volcano? When do we say that a volcano is inactive? So a volcano is considered to be inactive it is if it, have, it has not erupted uh, for the last 10,000 years. And its physical form is already being changed by agents of weathering and eruption. So, nawawala na yung kanitsura na pagiging volcano because of these agents of eruption, uh, wind, and other and other uh, factors. Okay? Itong inactive in other references, this is referred to as, as dormant. So, dormant kasi uh, more on, parang kumaga natutulog na natutulog yun yung ibig sabihin niya. So, inactive, it might not have records of eruption, it might not have uh, erupted within the last 10,000 years, Pero, possibly pa rin siyang mag Pwede pa rin. Okay? Now, in other references, uh, there is a third type of volcano uh, according to frequency of eruption. That is what we ref they refer to as extinct volcano. So, the difference between an extinct and an inactive is that kapag inactive kasi, di ba, walang rec, hindi nag within the last 10,000 years, pero pwede pa rin na mag -erap. Kapag extinct na yung volcano, hindi na siya kailanman mag -erap. Kasi sabi doon, yung kanyang magma chamber is already empty. So, wala nang magma na lalabas sa kanya. Okay? So, these are the types of volcano according to frequency of reduction. You have active and inactive. Inactive or dormant. And for other references, pero pang pangatlo, we have what, uh, ang tawag nga tawag natin na uh, uh, extinct volcano. Now, another way by which we uh, group volcanoes is according to the cone shape. Sabi natin kanina, not all volcanoes look like a mountain. Ano, it doesn't have to always be high or steep. Ngayon, malaman natin ano yung iba't ibang klase ng volcano based on the cone shape. Let's have the first one. Uh, the first one we call composite or strato volcano. A strato volcano looks like this. So ito yung um, typical na na naiimagine natin kapag sinabi natin ang volcano. So a strato volcano or a composite volcano is high and has symmetrical and steep sides. Mataas at uh, matarik yung kanyang side. Symmetrical, the two sides are almost the same, like that of the sides of a triangle. Ano? So, eruptions of this type of a volcano are dangerous and explosive, with many la layers of lava and pyroclastic materials. So basically, this is a result of the alternating, nagpile siya, the alternating layers ng uh, again, I might a picture ng lava and pyroclastic materials. Now, um, aside from your uh, lava, by the way, slow moving lava, ano, uh, at gases, ash, and uh, fumes also come out of this volcano. Bakit dangerous? Ano, at bakit explosive? It actually is because of uh, the fact that the magma that comes out of this is very thick and sticky, like that of a honey. So dahil sticky siya, hindi kagadagad nakakapag-escape yung gases na nandun within, that or within the magma. So basically, nagkakaroon ng build-up ng gases and then 
kapag hindi niya nakayang i-continue, it explodes, sending out huge cloud of gases, ashes, and after that, yung ating uh, magma, uh, which we this time call lava already, kapag lumabas na siya ng volcano. Now, um, this is believed to have killed the most people because of their deadly nature and high numbers. Okay? Uh, although it is on the dangerous side, yung mga types ng volcano, uh, composite volcanoes actually among the most famous ones because of their, uh, sabi nga kanina, symmetrical uh, na sides. Okay? Take a look at these examples. You probably can, can identify this. The first one, you have Mount Fuji in Japan. In pictures, ano? Pag mo na si Japan, pumapasyal sila dito. So it's very high. It has um, almost symmetrical and steep slope. Matarik na, na, na slope. Ano? Second one, of course, the very popular, our very own Mount Mayon. Okay, and um, the one with an almost perfect cone shape. Okay, tall, symmetrical, steep sides. And the third one would be the Mount Nepa Merapi in Indonesia. Okay, so ito yung typical na 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 imagine natin when we think when we think about the uh, volcano. But there are of course these are just a few examples. Marami pa tayo ibang mga examples. Let's proceed this time to the third, ano third type of I mean, second type of volcano according to cone shape. So this time we have what we uh, refer to as cinder volcano. This is how it looks like. So, iba rin yung kanitsura niya aside from what we have uh, seen a while ago. So, cinder volcano have, um, it has circular or oval cone with almost vertical steep slope. So, kung matarik na, mas matarik pa itong cinder volcano. Hindi siya kasing taas noong, noong sa... Uh, composite. Ano, pero mataas din siya at mas matarik naman. So, this is formed in a short period of time with size and shape like that of a hill. Ano, um, can imagine yung ating chocolate hills? So, parang ganun yung itsura niya. Now, they are built from erupting lava that breaks into small pieces as it shoots into the air. So, kapag nag, ano, nasa into the air, nasuspend into the air yung lava, it solidifies into smaller pieces. Ano, and then, um, itong uh, nag-solidify na smaller pieces na to, ang size ay kasi nilaki ng mga graba, yung gravel na ginagamit sa construction. Ano. Those are what we refer to as cinders. Pagpatak niya, yung sa gilid ng ating uh, opening or vent, magpapile up yun hanggang tumaas na tumaas, and that forms your cinder volcano. Kaya nagpapile up na yun, ang tawag ay cinder. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya ay cinder cone or cinder volcano. Now, as you have observed, unlike the strato volcano, which has its side vents, this one, um, this is formed from only one vent. Ano, isa lang. Meron, meron lang siyang uh, main vent. Wala siyang mga side vents. And uh, uh, yung mga cone na nasa side. Now, these are some examples of cinder volcano. We have here the Smith volcano. This is in the Philippines, specifically in Babuyan Islands. So compared to the composite volcano, the Mayon volcano, it has a much steeper slope, mas matarik, ano? and it's smaller compared to the Mayon volcano. Another example would be this lava, lava butte in the United States of America. So you can see here, it only has one vent, the one at the top of the center. Okay, and the third one, we have a uh, Kula volcano. This one is... Uh, found in Turkey. So, mukha siyang chocolate hills. Ano mukha siyang hill lang? Isa din sa mga chocolate hills. So, this is how cinder volcanoes look like. Let's now proceed to the third type of volcano based on cone shape. We have what we call shield volcano. This is how it looks like. So, iba pa rin yung tura niya compared with the first two that I have shown you a while ago. So, probably, kita niyo na yung difference agad. Ano? So for shield volcano, this is not high compared to the first two. Yung composite, mataas talaga. Ano? Yung, um, yung cinder, medyo mataas pa rin. But this one, mababa, mas mababa siya compared to the first two. And hindi man siya mataas, pero it has a very broad shape with almost no slope. Okay? So this is referred to as a shield volcano because it is shaped like a bowl or shield. Ginagamit ng mandiring man noong panahon, nakabaligtad na ganun na nakapatong sa flat na surface. Okay? Now, uh, this is huge because of the ample supply of runny magma resulting to lava flow. So, kung kanina, explosive, yung type of eruption, it forms huge uh, cloud of gases, ash, and other material. 
dito naman, more on love flow yung nangyayari because the, the magma here is not thick but rather runny. So paglabas nyo sa crater, magpo-flow lang siya parang tubig. So hindi siya explosive, hindi siya violent eruption. So since runny siya, malayo yung nararating ng lava at hindi siya agad-agad nagsusunodify. Kaya hindi ka nagkakaroon ng uh, steep na slope dito. Okay? So kaya sabi nga dyan, effusive or non-explosive eruption. Let's have the examples of shield volcano. We have the Mauna Kea. This is found in Hawaii. As you can see, um, hindi, ma, hindi talaga siya matarik. Ano? This is not like that of a typical volcano na na-imagine natin. Pangalawa, you have the Mauna Loa. This is in Hawaii as well. And then the third one, you have the Mount Rangel in Alaska. By the way, ito, ito nasa side na to, ito yun. So, so far, we were able to discuss the different types of volcano. So first, according to frequency of eruption, we have active and inactive. And we have, according to cone shape, you have composite, cinder, and shield. Okay? We will now proceed to the third section of our uh, video. Volcanoes do not erupt the same way. You know? Some erupt uh, violently while others erupt less violently. In general, volcanic eruptions can be classified as either being um, explosive or violent or non-explosive or what they refer to as effusive. However, the classification of volcanic eruption is not as simple as that. We actually have five uh, very specific type of volcanic eruptions. Let's go over them one by one. Let's have the first uh, type. We have what we call phreatic or hydrothermal eruption. Okay, So given the term itself, uh, you already have their hydro. So water is involved here. So this is actually what transpired in Taal last year. So how does this type of uh, volcanic eruption take place? This is a steam-driven eruption which takes place when hot rock comes in contact with water. Okay. Now, um, this is short-lived and characterized by ash columns, as you can see on the picture, uh, but maybe an onset of a larger eruption. Kumbaga ito ay simula pa lang, or ito ay... Uh, indication na may mga susunod pa na mas malalakas na eruption within that volcano. So probably you're thinking, aba, oo nga, it's a contact between your hot rock or magma and water because this is uh, Taal Volcano, meron kang lake na nasa paligid na. But actually, this takes place because of the interaction between the magma and water that is also underneath, inside of the volcano. So pwede the source of water would be groundwater. In this case, just like uh, what you see on the picture, you have your magma chamber. So you have your magma going up. Ano? Pataas dun sa kanyang conduit. And along the way, uh, maari siyang mag-come into contact with this water. Ano? Yung ating groundwater. Because of that, high temperature of your magma, you have your hot rock, yung liquid mo na water will turn into steam. Kaya lang abrupt yung biglaan. That's going to result in an explosion. So explosion actually starts from the inside. So after the explosion, siyempre masisira yung ilang mga rocks, magkakaroon ng debris dyan, and other materials. That's why you form this column of ash. Okay? Pero normally, walang bagong magma na lumalabas from uh, the inside of the volcano. Okay? So yung water na nag-interact dyan, hindi itong tubig na nasa lake, ano, but rather water inside, probably groundwater that is below the volcano. Okay? That's for phreatic or hydrothermal eruption. The second one is what we refer to as phreatomagmatic eruption. Okay? So this is still somehow similar with phreatic. Ano, this is a result, a violent eruption, that, which is a result of the contact between water and magma. And it results to large columns of very fine ash and high speed and sideways emission of pyroclastic material we call base surge. The difference only is that most of the time what is being considered as a phreatic Phreatomagmatic eruption is the eruption na nangyayari dun sa mga submarine na mga volcano nasa ilalim ng, ng tubig. So, meron ka magma that comes out of the volcano. Siyempre, nasa ilalim siya ng tubig. It will come into contact with water and that forms this large column of uh, gases and ash. Okay? Third type, we have strombolian eruption. So, this is a periodic weak to violent eruption characterized by fountain of lava. So, the keyword for this. But strombolian fountain of lava, so more on less violent type of eruption. So fountain of lava and usually accompanied by lava flow. 
Example of this would be the eruption of Irazu volcano in Costa Rica. Uh, for the fourth type, we have Vulcanian eruption. So for Vulcanian eruption, it is characterized by tall columns, uh, eruption columns that reach up to 20 kilometer high with pyroclastic flow and uh, ashfall tephra. Now, this is um, the type of eruption that transpired in Paricutin volcano in Mexico. Uh, this is small to moderate explosion lasting seconds to minutes. Now, kapag mas malaki pa, mas explosive, mas mas destructive yung uh, mas violent yung volcano mas mataas pa yung column of gas na nafo-form iba sabi dito sa Vulcanian up to 20 kilometers if it exceeds that 20 to 35 kilometers that is already considered as a plinian eruption excessively explosive type of eruption of gas and pyroclastic material there is a high rate of magma discharge sustained for minutes to hours and even during days ano caused widespread dispersion of ash Example of this is what transpired in Mount Pinatuko uh, in, of course, in the Philippines, specifically in Zambales. Okay? Why do volcanoes you know? Tectonic plates are the key. Now, these tectonic plates, which are massive slabs of solid rock, as you can see on the picture on the screen, uh, they slide over the Earth's surface towards or away from each other. Now, as they do that, that creates actually fissures or cracks or openings that allow the magma underneath to escape. So generally, uh, most of the volcanoes are formed that way. Now, eruptions vary depending on the type of volcano that is formed. As you have seen in our previous discussion a while ago, uh, composite volcanoes erupt differently compared with cinder and um, shield volcano. And uh, the type of eruption actually depends as well on the type of boundary these volcanoes sit on. You will know more about this type of uh, tectonic boundaries when you go to grade 10. Now, going back to volcanic eruption, we know, of course, that the magma inside of the volcano has high temperature. And um, this magma, this liquefied uh, rock, this has lower density compared to the surrounding solid rock. Because of this, this magma would, would uh, definitely rise. Now, as this magma rise, uh, bubble starts to form from the gas dissolved in that magma, okay? And that will result to your um, magma further swelling or expanding. Now, as it continuously uh, expand because of uh, creates bubbles because of the gases dissolved, uh, that adds pressure within the volcano. And eventually, it forces the molten rock or magma into the air out of the craters. Now, we made mention a while ago about the explosive and non-explosive or effusive eruption. So basically, for explosive uh, volcanic eruption, they occur when magma is thick and does not flow easily. As we have mentioned a while ago when we discussed about um, composite volcano. So since the magma is thick and does not flow easily, these are slow-moving magma, it tend to block the vent of a volcano, allowing for the buildup of gases. And once gases are already built up inside of the volcano that adds pressure until the volcano can lo no longer hold it and that results to an explosion or eruption. And um, because of the explosion that results in the formation of this uh, mushroom cloud of ash and other gases similar to what is formed during nuclear explosion. Okay. Now as for non-explosive eruption, a while ago for explosive, that is a result of a thick, um, slow-moving magma. As for this, the magma that comes out is thin and uh, runny. It flows easily. So, yung sa explosive, parang honey. Ano yung, yung ating magma, mabagal mag-flow, thick, stick, sticky. Ano, ito naman, kabaliktaran. So, pwede siguro compared to uh, water. Ano, so, runny, mabilis siya mag-flow. So, since hindi siya thick, in, it, it, it does not tend to block the passageway. So, um, hindi na nabablock yung vent and what happens is that it, it just continuously flow. So, walang build up ng gas, hindi siya nag explode Kaya, ano yung resulta would be non-explosive or effusive eruption as uh, you can see on the picture on the side. Okay? Now, with this two, explosive and non-explosive, one factor really that dictates would be the magma, right? How 
how easily it flows, how easily the magma flows. Now, that is actually what we refer to as viscosity, magma's viscosity. Uh, ma viscosity refers to the measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. So in simple terms, viscosity refers to the thickness or stickiness of a material. So yung thickness or stickiness ng magma, yun ang isang factor na nagdedetermine kung magiging explosive or effusive yung isang eruption. Now, in terms of magma's viscosity, there are three factors that affect that. We have the temperature, chemical composition, and amount of dissolved gases. So for temperature, magma's viscosity decreases with temperature. So habang tumataas ang temperature, mas nagiging less viscous, mas nagiging less thick, mas nagiging thin yung magma. So the higher the temperature of magma, the less viscous it becomes. So syempre, kapag less viscous, mas thin, mas runny, less violent din yung eruption. Non-explosive, ano yung resulta ng eruption. Kapag naman mas ababa ang temperature, edi mas viscous, mas thick, diba? block yung gases, mas naging explosive ang eruption. Magma's chemical composition. So ano yung chemical makeup ng magma? It actually focuses more on the silica content. So magma with high silica are more viscous than those with low silica content. So, mas mataas ang silica, mas thick. Mas kakaunti ang silica, mas thin. So, magma that contains less silica is relatively fluid and travel, travels far before solidifying. So, pag more ang silica, mas viscous, mas slow moving, mas madaling mag-solidify, mas nabablock yung gases, mas explosive yung eruption. Kapag mas kakaunti yung silica, mas runny, mas less viscous yung, yung, yung magma, so, mas malayo nararating bago mag-solidify, hindi nabablock yung passageway. Less explosive or non-explosive yung eruption usually na na-form. Amount of dissolved gases and other factors being equal, gas dissolved in magma tends to increase its ability to flow. So, mas maraming gases, mas madaling mag-flow. And the result na would be less explosive eruption. So, so far we were able to discuss in this section how volcanoes erupt.